Should you watch Bakura no Nanokakan Sentu? English title, Seven Days War. If you want a night of nostalgia, yes, you should watch this. Other than wanting to be a middle schooler again, the plot has a huge plot hole, so don't watch this movie. If you do decide to watch this movie, don't take it seriously. Our main character is named Mamaru. He is a history buff and nerd. He likes history, which I have a history degree, so him spouting history facts, I was like, oh, I know that and I understand that. That's why I went to college, to understand anime. But if you aren't a history major, you are like the rest of the characters in having no interest in understanding why this kid has no friends. Because I mean, all he does is just say history facts all day long. He's such a nerd, so yeah, it makes sense why he's kind of a loner. The animation for this 2020 film seems like it came out in early 2000s. Like, it's not up to par with current anime art, but it's not horrible. Just watching this made me feel like I was back in middle school watching this on Cartoon Network when they showed anime movies at night. The whole entire plot of this is people need to grow up, but our characters in high school want nothing to do with adult affairs, and yes, the movie makes it a point to not say the word grown up. Adult affairs or adult life. Our characters go on strike for growing up because a bunch of high schoolers running away and just being like, I am not going to grow up, that totally works. That's why adults don't want you to run away, so you can stop time and not age. This is a movie, but we get an opening song as if it were a TV show, which was weird. The song was like a musical and the timeline sped up, and that helped the timeline go a lot faster for the movie. Our characters, thanks to Mamaru are going on vacation for seven days at an abandoned factory to get away from adult life and to stay until Aya's birthday since her father told her to grow up and they are going to be moving and just the kids don't want Aya to leave and grow up and this is their strike against the adults going to this abandoned factory for seven days. We have a montage of our characters exploring the factory. Our character's food is gone and the luggage is sorted through, making the characters find and chase after the homeless person who ends up being a kid either named Amaretto, Marditi, Mallet. I really don't know this kid's name. I thought the kid's name was Mariti, but when I looked up the characters from Seven Days More, they said the kid's name was Mallet. I don't even know this kid's name. I'm just gonna call it Kid. So they chase after a kid and the mood gets super dramatic. Adults show up and they try to take a Kid because they are an illegal immigrant. This movie really does make it a point not to say the word grown-up but instead adult and I get it this film is about high schoolers rebelling against becoming adults but it's like so odd to always hear the word adult when they can just say grown-up or grown-ups besides that weird change in dialogue Everything else is fine. Our characters and Kid are trapped inside this abandoned factory because the men who are after Kid trap them inside, which I don't know if the adults are trying to starve the kids and make them come out like in war, like a guerrilla warfare, which the title is called Seven Days War for a reason. It's supposed to be a war. The kids are on vacation for seven days, but at the same time, trapping the kids inside, it also means the adults can't get inside either because they just 100% block all entrances and they have no way in or no way out. So Seven Days War isn't really about a teenager going on strike against adults. It's about our characters helping an immigrant child not be deported before they find their parents. I mean, the movie starts off with the kids going to this abandoned factory to get away from adults and to escape adult life, and it's a kid versus adult plot theme, but it's not the plot theme of I don't want to grow up. It's more of a plot theme as the movie goes on about basically helping immigrants. How the characters were trapped from the outside, they also do the same to the inside so the adults can come in as well. So it's basically kids and adults just doing the same thing back and forth to each other. And as I mentioned, yeah, the adults have trapped them inside so there's no way in but there's no way out. In the first round, the kids win by saying they will blow up the place and all of them in it if the adults don't leave and go back out and just leave them alone. 
On the second day, the kids win again by posting a funny video from their first day about the showdown they had with the adult, and it becomes a huge hit online, so the media now shows up at the factory, but doesn't get close, as well as since the media is there, immigration can't do anything in front of the cameras, I guess they don't want the public to see what goes on, or they don't want to see a child being taken away, like, I don't know, truthfully what the reason is for immigration not to go in front of cameras even in real life I really don't know the reason I just know this anime is like oh crap we have a bunch of people now at this factory we can't do anything I guess we have to go back to the kid versus adult theme of not growing up in the abandoned factory the public knows there are high schoolers they say the high schoolers have taken over the factory and it's now in the daily news Aya and Kaori's father are in the government and they find a way to get into the factory without the kids knowing. It works and the kids escaped but Aya was left behind because someone had to stay and operate the lift. The kids were able to escape but they go back for them. The day ends and the kids win again. We get a tangled moment with the floating lanterns which I know that film had their own song to this moment but if you don't think or sing this song at last I see the lights I'm very disappointed in you. It had such a tangled moment at the end when the kids finally leave and escape the factory at the end of their vacation because it really was cool. They built a hot air balloon, they have floating lanterns everywhere, and it was such like a nice way to get out. And that's day five. Day six comes and our main characters learn all their faces are on social media so everyone knows who they are in the factory, but Aya is not included in the photos because her father is higher up in the government than Kairi's, so Aya is safe. So out of our six high schoolers, only five of the photos are shown, and now their classmates are bullying them. Thanks to this social media development and the adults trying to get the kids out of the factory by exposing their faces and names, they're now being bullied by their classmates online for causing a scene like this, and Aya, who wasn't included, is protected since her father didn't expose her face and name on social media and our characters now start to fight with each other. We're still on day six and the adults use a crane to make a hole in the wall so this way there is an easy way in and an easy way out that can't be controlled by anyone. Just a huge hole in the wall so there's no escape anymore. They do this during a storm which the mountain next to the factory collapses because they just blew up half the factory and now the mountain during the storm is like oh you can't do that and the adults have to stop so they don't cause the building to collapse even more and they have to retreat but them retreating is basically instead of being inside the building they're just outside the building but they're right there at the entrance. The kids kind of understand now that there might not be a chance for them to win and that the adults basically have a clear victory. When the adults have to leave the factory they say the word retreating because they're adults, they follow orders, the movie really makes it a point to establish the adult stereotype and the kid stereotype, so the adults retreating is definitely a point made in this movie. Mamoru, during this retreat, because the kids kind of know this is the end for them, they're gonna lose, and they're already kind of mad and fighting with each other over the social media, Mamoru just decides to confess his feelings for Aya, that he likes her, and it just is something he wanted to do to break the tension in the room. Aya then confesses to Kairi, which no one reacts badly to Aya telling the group she likes a girl. After Mamoru confesses his feelings to Aya, Aya then confesses her feelings to Kari, which is another female, which this is a Japan. So a female saying they love another female is not something you do in Japan, as well as it's very impressive that they had it in this movie, because usually anime shows or movies, if they have two of the same gender characters like each other and love with each other, they kind of maybe only kiss, but they're basically just acting like best friends. So this scene right here about Mamoru confessing his feelings to Aya, Aya confessing her feelings to Kagari, it's basically a huge movement for Japan 
to even establish that it's okay almost to have a five second gay scene right here. Once Aya and Kagari talk about basically their feelings for each other, none of the characters act badly about it either. They don't really care that these two girls are having this gay moment and that's really impressive for Japan. It was nice to see the characters, they didn't care that Aya is basically a lesbian, or maybe the movie will say she's bi, but who knows, it just was very almost played off, which is good because in Japan they kind of established their gay movement and then just moved on, which is good because it wasn't treated badly like how it usually is. The storm ends and the adults go back by using the crane to make the hole in the wall even bigger, which before they break in again, our characters were able to make their own hot air balloon and fly out of the factory, having this tangled moment, which marks day 7 at the end of the camping war trip. 7 days war is over, at the end of the movie, they are able to reunite Kid with their parents, mainly thanks to the social media the high schoolers got. Kid's face was also on social media, and through online platforms, people were able to get Kid's face around, and the parents were like, hey, that's my child. I've been looking for them. So they were able to reconnect the kid with their parents. So yay, they're not going to be deported, or if they get deported, they can at least be together, not separated. Uh, we don't really know what happens to them if they stay in Japan or if they go back to the country they left, but at least the family's together now. We learned that the kid is a girl and not a guy, which I thought kid was a guy, but then at the end, the kid's like, I'm a girl, and that's just how the film ends. The high schoolers reunite kid with their parents. We don't even know what happens to the family, as well as the high schoolers are basically going back to society. So there are seven days of running away to not be an adult, kind of did something because they helped an immigration child. But other than that, it really did nothing. It wasn't this kid versus adult plot like the film kind of made it seem. The kids had their week getaway, helping an immigrant being reunited with their family, going against adults, and winning before Aya moves back. And the film had the children fight hard about being young, but like they grow up and they live adult lives, so it's like they all tried really hard to be Peter Pan and were Peter Pan for seven days, and now they're adults again. So even though they tried to stop time for a week, they still went back to their life. I mean, that's why they built the hot air balloon to escape the abandoned factory, to go back to society, and to reunite kid with their parents. So like in real life, everyone grows up eventually. This anime movie, yeah, definitely weird plot hole as I mentioned in the beginning of this movie with the high schoolers being like, no, we're not going to grow up. And then at the end of the movie, they just willingly leave the factory and they're like, yeah, we're going to go back to high school and we're going to go to college and continue our lives. But this movie, I wouldn't watch again alone. I would watch it again if I was with other people, mainly so I can almost make fun of it, like fun of the plot on how the kids try so hard hard not to be adults, but then at the end of the film, they willingly be adults. So I wouldn't watch this alone. I would watch it with other people. If you want to watch it alone because you're having that nostalgia moment or you have nothing to do one night, you can watch this. I would say watch this probably with other people. So this way you can all comment on the movie together, make fun of it together, or if maybe you like the movie, you can all like it together. I mean, this movie wasn't bad in a sense of the immigration plots with the kid versus adult plot that that was odd there's a lot of plot holes but the immigration plot was actually really good and that is seven days war you can leave a comment if you've seen this movie and you liked it, didn't like it, whatever your feelings were for it. I do know Seven Days War. This is an anime movie of it because back a long time ago, there was a live action of the movie. So they decided to make it into an anime. So maybe you don't want to see this anime Seven Days War movie. You want to check out the live action movie, which go ahead. You can do that. 